Hi friends, today we will see in this video about Post Intensive Care Syndrome, that is PICS. I think it's not a widely addressed topic or kind of a neglected topic, but it has serious effects on the patient's outcome. Uh, survival of the critical and well patient is improved last decades because of uh, the advances in critical care medicines. Many of the survivors uh, have developed some kind of uh, disabilities after treatment in the ICU, which is now recognized as PICS or Post Intensive Care Center. PICS is defined as new or worsening impairment in physical, cognitive, or mental health status arising after the critical illness and persisting beyond the discharge of the patient from the ICU settings. Consequent to this, mental health of the family member may also be affected in an adverse manner. It has been observed that 30% of the family members are experiencing stress, anxiety and depression followed by the uh, discharge or the death of the loved one from the ICU, termed as PICS family. Let's see more about the PICS. Okay. This is the PICS structure. It has both sides, family and patient. Okay, let's go to the family first. We will see here mental health problem like uh, anxiety, uh, ASR that means acute stress reaction, depression, PTSS means post-traumatic stress syndrome and PTSD, post-traumatic stress uh, disorders, complicated grief. The final outcome will be decreased quality of life. And the other side here, the patient, who we can see uh, three main uh, problems like mental health, cognitive impairment, and physical impairment. And let's go to the mental health. You will see it same like uh, family, anxiety and acute stress reaction, uh, depression, PTSS, as mean uh, post-traumatic stress uh, syndrome post-traumatic uh, stress disorders. In this cognitive impairment, the problem with the executive function and memory and attention. And you will see here physical impairment is mainly uh, pulmonary and neuromuscular. The final outcome will be same like uh, uh, family, the decreased quality of life. Let's see some more details. Functionally impaired, pulmonary and neuromuscular. These are the physical components of functionally impaired PICS. 60 to 80 percent of patients are functionally impaired. ICU occurred weakness, diffuse, symmetric, or generalized muscle weakness, critical illness polyneuropathy, critical illness myopathy, prolonged neuromuscular blockade, disease atrophy, lung capacity or volume impairment, uh, impaired activities of daily living. Next is cognitively impaired. The problem with executive function, memory, and attention. 50 to 70 percent of patients are cognitively impaired. Deficits are like executive function problem, memory and attention problem. The extremely prevalent one year after hospital discharge. 34 percent with score similar to traumatic brain injury. 24 percent with score similar to Alzheimer's disease. Delirium in the ICU was an independent risk factor for long-term cognitive impairment. It affects all ages range. Next is poor mental health. Problems like anxiety, depression, PTSS, that means post-traumatic stress syndrome, post-traumatic stress uh, disorders. And mental health components. For the patients, 10 to 40 percent of patients experience mental health deficits. Deficits are including anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress uh, disorder. For the family, Depression, anxiety, PTSD, complicated grief. Poor mental health common among ICU survivors. Depression 37% at 3 months and 33% at 1 year. PTSD 7% at both 3 months and 1 year. It's double that of the general population, that is 3%. Depression uh, is driven by physical symptoms like uh, ADL disability that means activities of daily living disability and IADL that is instrumental activities of daily living disability. Solutions or what we can do to prevent this PICS. Key strategies maximize mobility, maximize, uh, minimize delirium, enhance coping skills. Interventions in uh, both settings 
front end strategies in the ICU and back end strategies after the ICU and after the hospital. Let's see here the front end strategies in the ICU to prevent PICS. Look at the picture here. This is the ABCD bundle uh, for preventing PICS. ABC awakening, breathing, and coordination. D delirium identification. Uh, e early mo mobility. F family involvement. G good hand of communication. H hand the patient or family the written information. Let's go for the physical first. A B C and E awakening, breathing, and coordination. E early mobility. It belongs to the physical. Uh, the, actually, this one we can start in the early stage of uh, admission. Early exercise is equal to progressive mobility. Make a plan and uh, coordinate with the RT and PT staff to uh, make a wake up, uh, breathe, and movements. Next is cognitive, minimize delirium. For that, uh, from this bundle, we can do uh, D, delirium identification. Uh, agitation, pain, and delirium are interrelated. Actually, there is no magic drug or specific treatment recommendation for this. We have to think and uh, make a plan for the patient according to the illness. Uh, like we can consider like titrating sedation, avoid toxic situations like hypoxemia, infection, electrolyte imbalance, shock, like that. And uh, we can consider psychologists and counseling for the patient and do frequent uh, assessment for the cognitive health of the patient. Next is mental health, enhance coping skills. For that, we can do FGH from this bundle. Family involvement, uh, good hand of communication, written information for the family and patient. Uh, we can help them to set up uh, realistic expectations by providing brochures on what to expect after discharge, patient and family education, and ICU diaries. Uh, we can make a diary with uh, daily progress and even with pictures. But it strictly depends on the hospital policy. Many of the hospitals are not allowing to take pictures and passing somewhere there in the diary and uh, going out. So it strictly depends on the hospital policy. So here we will see back end strategies after the ICU, post ICU care. Near rehabilitation staff to coordinate the post ICU care. Uh, barriers to this may be limited awareness of long term consequences. No rehabilitation pathway for ICU, uh, for example, stroke and uh, traumatic brain injury. Uh, limited exposure to the critical care issues. What we can do? Increase awareness, educate the family, encourage uh, rehabilitation services. Then back in strategies after the hospital, we can give them callback numbers. Like we can tell them uh, if you are having problem, uh, call this number and we can give them a hotline numbers and follow up phone calls and checking in to see if the patient has followed up a uh, list of referral services within the hospital system and ICU follow up clinics like our staff with the interdisciplinary team. Saving life is a great thing but if it is not with the intact brain or physical ability our dedication and uh, hard work will be useless. We know that the life of a person with impaired physical and uh, or mental health will be miserable. Imagine that if we are uh, anticipating PICS and the including uh, prevention measures in the plan of care, we can have not only a survivor, we can have uh, something more like a physically and mentally intact person and family. Then our dedication and hard work will be fruitful. I hope you enjoyed my class. Thanks for watching me. Bye bye.